In the previous video, we explored how to install a Drush command extension by enabling the sandwich utility. In this one, what we're going to do is take an example that we've been working on for the past several videos and turn it into a command. So before, what we did was ran php-script in order to pull in a PHP script to run our command, and we found a workaround for supplying parameters to that script so we could vary the output somewhat. So let's explore what it takes to make that a genuine Drush command. So I'm going to go over to our resource pack directory, and inside of the coders folder, there's a folder called Drush Users Plus. Now if you expand this, you'll see that it just includes one file. It's a drush.ing file, which indicates that this is going to supply at least one command. So let's go ahead and copy this folder, and let's go ahead and paste it into our .drush folder, which includes several files that we've been working on in this series. Now before we saw that we could include the sandwich command in the very base of the .drush folder, but we can also organize things a bit better by putting our files inside of folders. So let's go ahead and open up this file and take a look at what's inside. So again, the purpose of this script and command is to display the last users that visited the site along with how long ago it was that they visited. We want to supply two parameters that the user can modify, the number of items to display, and also the order of information in the display. If we scroll through this, we see that the code is actually pretty short here, and we have just three functions. Our users plus drush command is the implementation of hook drush command. The first part, of course, is the name of our file, usersplus.drush.inc. And like we saw in the sandwich example, what we're doing here is creating an array of items that are each a command. So we're going to have a command here that's users plus dash last. And we include information about the options that we're going to take for it. And we give an example as well. We also set an alias to u plus l. Now in the sandwich example, under bootstrap, we were not bootstrapping the entire Drupal site. In this case, we need the full Drupal site in order to access the database and pull out the user information. So we're using the constant drush bootstrap Drupal full. And then we're returning these items. The only other required function here is the function that does the actual logic for our command. And the naming convention is a little bit different here when compared to the sandwich example. So the name is drush users plus last. Now, if we were following the convention from the previous video, it would be drush users plus, which was the name of our file, and then the name of the command, which is users plus last. But there's a special case here where if the name of the file is the same as the first part of the name of the function, then we're only going to use that string once in the name of the function. So instead of drush users plus users plus last, it's simply drush users plus last. The logic inside of this function is very similar to the logic we used in the PHP script, except we're using a couple of different commands. So first of all, in order to get the options that are passed to this command, we use drush get option. We don't have to use the kind of looping that we did when this was a PHP script, so that simplifies things a bit. And then we set a default for the count, just in case the user didn't supply a number. In the query, we go ahead and pass the count to limit the number of items to return. Then we run the query. And then when we loop through these items in order to print out the output, there's a couple of changes. The first is that we're using drush get option again in order to get the time first parameter. And then instead of using an echo statement to print out the output, we're using the function drush print. And notice that we're not adding any new lines to the end of this text like we did in our PHP script. This is because drush print will add its own new lines. Other than that, the code is almost identical to our previous example. Now in order to register this with drush, we need to clear the cache. So I'm going to jump back to the command line, and I'm going to do drush cc. I'm just going to hit one for all. Now because we're requiring a full Drupal bootstrap for this command, this can only be run when we're inside of a directory for a Drupal site, or when we're using an alias to a Drupal site. Let's go ahead and give this a shot. I'm going to go ahead and run the command drush users plus dash last, and we see the output. Looks very similar to our previous example here. Let's go ahead and try it with the new parameters. So the command here is drush, users plus dash last, and then we're specifying the count as one, and time first is one as well. And I'm going to hit enter. Now we get an error here that says there's an unknown option time first. This is because if we look at the code, and we scroll up to the top, under our options we only have count. 
So let's go ahead and add our time first option here. So I'm just gonna copy the count line. So I'm setting time first, and the description is show the time before the username. Let's go ahead and save that, and jump back to the command line and give it another try. And when we ran it again, notice we get the output now without the warning, so we're good to go.